How are you dealing with some of the harsh attacks against you? Let me give you a couple of examples. Oh, thanks. Good. Yeah. <laughs> you're welcome. Yeah, I'm glad to do it. Yeah. South Carolina Democratic chairman said your primary qualification seems to be you didn't have an abortion. Politico reported the National Organization for Women Spokesmen. She's a, more a conservative man than she is a woman on women's issues. Gloria Steinem, Sarah Palin shares nothing but a chromosome with Hillary Clinton. Yeah, you, you, you got me at that first one, that abortion issue. Mm -hmm. That's an appalling comment. Um, you know, though, the shots that, that I'm taking, I know what the truth is, and, and I know what my convictions are and my foundation is, so, so I'm fine there. I'm, I'm fine there. But the shots that perhaps our campaign has taken, it's nothing compared to the shots that some people across America are taking today, the things that really matter. Somebody worried about losing their house because of Wall Street collapses. Somebody worried about losing their job or being able to pay for their uh, child's health care coverage or a, a parent um, perhaps having lost a son or daughter in battle. Those are the shots that matter. I'm going to keep it all in perspective. There is, Ed Rendell said the coverage of Barack Obama in this cam campaign was embarrassing. Democrat, Mark Penn, Clinton pollster. He said that um, the media is on dangerous ground so far. They're the biggest losers in this race. Scott Rasmussen had a poll. 69% of people are convinced that reporters are trying to help the candidate they want win and five to one, that's Senator Obama. Do you see media bias in this campaign? I don't know, but a conservative candidate has got to know what they're getting themselves into in, in the world that we are in today. And, and, you know, I knew, putting my name on the dotted line there, saying, yeah, I'm willing to serve, uh, I knew what I was getting into. And y you can't whine about it. That doesn't do any good. And you've got to, you got to grow thick skin. I, I was telling um, a couple of our campaign people, people the other day, I said, you see this? You, you think this is just baby fat, right? From having trig four months ago. No, it's, it's some thick skin in there also. Let me ask you this, because there have been a number of controversies. I'll let you give a quick reaction to them that have, as the 30 mini army of reporters and, and op research people of the Obama campaign, did you ban books in the, in the Alaska Library? Did you try to ban books in the Alaska Library? No, but I got a in, kick in out of that one also. Library. Yeah, no, no banned books, no desire to ban a book. That list of banned books, though, that uh, we saw there that included Harry Potter, which, of course, had not even been written or published uh, mm -hmm. before I was in there to be accused of banning these books. No. It's false. You'd false. Never part of an effort to secede, false. have Alaska oh. secede from the Union. No, false. Always been a Republican, not been a part of a party that has wanted to secede. Seed. Did you only want to teach creationism in school and not evolution? No. In fact, um, growing up in a school teacher's house with a science teacher as a dad, you know, I have great respect for science being taught in our science classes and evolution to be taught in our science classes. You weren't supporting Pat Buchanan for president. You did have a button on. I did wear a button at his book signing or one of the events because he here a presidential candidate coming to little old Wasilla one year and we all showed up. It was it was an honor to see um, anyone of that stature you know, come to our city. All right. The bridge to nowhere. Yeah. Did you originally support it and did you change your view on it? Because the Democrats are saying, no, 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 she originally supported it and she said she opposed it. Yeah. Did well, you? I killed the bridge to nowhere, and uh, you know I think I ruffled some feathers there also with our congressman who had been requesting that bridge for so many years. Uh, what we needed to do up there in Alaska was find some good transportation between the the two land bodies there, and we did. We found that with an improved ferry system between Ketchikan and its airport. But the the bridge to nowhere is, as I've been saying in my speeches, if it's something that Alaskans really want and support, which at this time they're not willing to support um, to such an extent that, that we'll pay for it ourselves, we'd better kill the bridge because we know the rest of the nation is not going to pay for it. The biggest story, the biggest controversy now that has emerged with the 30 investigators you know, in, in Wasilla and the rest of Alaska seems to deal with the firing of your ex-brother-in-law. Um, big issue in Alaska, it, even news this morning that the Attorney General said no, these subpoenas are not going to happen, uh, et cetera, et cetera. What is your version of the story? My ex-brother-in-law is an Alaskan state trooper, mm -hmm. and he's never been fired. He's still an Alaskan state trooper. Uh, we have two different Attempt issues going fire, on here. 
two different issues. One is a cabinet member, uh, my commissioner of the Department of Public Safety, who had some strengths in some areas, um, insubordinate in some other areas as we tried to rein in budgets and tried to find efficiencies in departments and he wasn't willing to go there with his department. But his strengths in another area of public safety, I recognize that it was my responsibility, my obligation to make sure we had the right people in the right places at the right time in the cabinet to best serve Alaskans. So I asked him to transfer into another position and he chose not to be transferred so he left state service. That's, that's one issue. It had nothing to do with a former brother-in-law, a state trooper who happened to have been married to one of my sisters until about three years ago. Um, I asked the personnel board even in the state of Alaska if they had uh, questions about why it was that I exercised my responsibility in replacing our commissioner. I asked the personnel board, that appropriate board, to oversee such actions to come investigate. And that's where it is now. Hopefully it's the personnel board looking into this and it's not this obsessive partisanship that seems to have Engulfed kind of captured it. the issue. Well, right. One of the person was taught one of the the local officials up there, state officials, was talking about this being a big October surprise. Um, there was also talk about he admitted to tasering a 10-year-old or an 11-year-old child. He did this trooper tasered um, my nephew, and he tasered. Uh, well, that was. It's all on the record. It's it's all it's all there. His his threats against the first family is death threat against my dad. All that is in the record. And if the opposition researchers are choosing to forget that side of the story, well, that's, that's, they're not doing their job. Coming up, Governor